Father, we love you and we thank you. We ask that you, Holy Spirit, have your way in um, the, the ministry tonight. Father, that you uh, let your kingdom come, your will be done, and let Jesus Christ be glorified through the prophetic ministry uh, and the teaching of the prophetic ministry. We love you and we thank you. We ask that you... Um, bring forth the strategic revelation tonight to help us to understand everything we need to understand at this moment in order to further our prophetic destiny and grow in the calling and giftings that you desire for us to have. And we give you all the praise and all the glory. And as always, Lord, may you receive all the glory and all the honor. May the testimony of Jesus continually be the spirit of prophecy in our lives in Jesus name and everybody said amen. amen we're going to talk tonight so here's what we're going to do it's a little bit different I've wrestled with this all day long <laughs> and so yeah I have I really have been in a wrangling with this all day so um here's what we're going to do we're going to talk briefly about the prophetic the diversity of prophetic ministry in the office and then we're going to review are you with me? Mm -hmm. We're going to review and then do a Q&A and let you, uh -oh. let you ask questions and just deal with, with everything that you got questions about. And it can be, and maybe it's something we've covered, maybe it's something we haven't covered, you know. So we're just going to deal with, with that and deal with the review. So, all right, so let's get started. You ready? Yes. There are... Um, one of the things that we need to understand about ministry, period, is that there is diversity in ministry. Yes. And there are varying kinds of prophetic... I'm sorry, I messed this up. There are varying kinds of prophets, prophets and prophetic ministries, right? There are varying kinds of prophets and prophetic ministries, just as there are varying types of other fivefold giftings. Do you know that not every pastor does it the same way and looks just alike? Hmm. No, I'm thankful. <laughs> right? And so uh, we cannot we cannot make everyone act the same or be involved in similar ministries across the spectrum of the church. And I apologize for the typos because I was got all this together at the last minute deciding where we're going. But uh, we can't make everybody be alike, right? Right. Because God has diversity. If everybody was the eye, where would the foot be? Is what the Bible says. Right? But if they so, all don't work together, it'd be a bad thing. Yes. Okay. And so, methods of operation will vary, as will the end product. Right? Mm -hmm. Have different contrasts, emphasis, and sometimes even outcomes. And we'll make this clear in a minute. In fact, sometimes there can be extreme contrast between the ministries. Walk in a Catholic church and walk in a Pentecostal church. <laughs> right. You'll find extreme contrast mm -hmm. of people doing the same, what, quote unquote, the same function in their mind, pastoring. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right? Walk in an Episcopal church and a Pentecostal church. Walk in a Baptist church and a Pentecostal church. Okay. Walk in a assembly of God church and an apostolic church. Mm -hmm. Right? And you'll see the function of the pastor carried out in a completely different way. Depending on the emphasis and contrast of the, the people through whom the Holy Spirit. Right? So all this is determined by the assignment. Everybody say assignment. Assignment. That they are given. Yes. And so it's so important, guys, that we focus on our assignment. You know, you're only responsible to do what you're called to do. Amen. Yes. You know, Marlon's not responsible to do what I'm called to do. He's responsible to do what he's called to do. He's not responsible to do what Pastor Ray's called to do. He's responsible to do what he's called to do. Right? Yes. And so we can learn from each other, but, but ultimately, ultimately God wants, called you and wants you to express the gift in your way. He doesn't need another Pastor Ray. He's got one. Right? right. <clears throat> and Bethel doesn't need two pastors. Right. 
They need, so there is, there's one. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And so we need to fulfill our assignment. And so the method, the ministry and the method of operation is going to be determined by the assignment that you're given and the person through whom the Holy Spirit is manifesting the gifting. Right? So the gifting is going to look different coming through me because I have different backgrounds, different thoughts, different personality. Mm -hmm. Right? Me, it may come out really, really intense. <laughs> you know? Chet, mm -hmm. it's going to come back pretty laid back. Mm -hmm. You know? A little softer. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because that's personality. Mm -hmm. Personality has nothing to do with it, really. It's all about anointing and gifting. But it's going to come through you. And be true to who you are. You don't have to be true to who Pastor Ray is or I am or anybody else. Right? Mm -hmm. You have to be true to who you are in the ministry and, and answer to the Lord. And if you do that, God will fit you in the body of Christ in the right place so that you can bring the correct, uh, uh, the, the most beneficial amount of, of uh, benefit to the body of Christ. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And so he wants you to be, I remember I was pastoring, and I've been pastoring about two years over in Bossier. And I, I was praying a lot. You know, and one day I was walking around the church praying, and the Lord goes, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. I was like, well, I'm praying. <laughs> He's like, no, what are you doing? And he goes, I, he goes, what are you doing here? I said, well, and I was, I had, Pastor Logan had been my pastor for 18, eight, almost 18 years at that point, you know? And so I was doing what Pastor Logan had taught me, what I had learned from, watched him do. Mm -hmm. And I was doing that over in Bossier. And he was going, what are you doing? And I said, well, I'm taking what Pastor Logan has shown me and using it. He goes, I don't need another Broadmoor. I got one. <laughs> All right. Right. And they can do Broadmoor better than you can do Broadmoor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's good. Mm -hmm. mm. So you do DL. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. You do DL in Bossier and watch what happens. Mm -hmm. And I went. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> now it can just do me. Mm -hmm. Right. So much comfortable, isn't it? You know? Yeah. And so I just went to church and I said, guys, forgive me. We're throwing everything out I've been doing because I haven't been true to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I said, from now on, we're just going to be true to what God speaks to me and us as a body. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And so you just be true to you. You be true to, and that doesn't mean you can't learn. I, I learned a lot from Pastor Logan. I still used a lot of that. Mm -hmm. right. Still use a lot of it today. <clears throat> but ultimately, I had to be true to who I am. Mm -hmm. You know. And so, I'm pretty spontaneous. Those of you who know me very well will know. Yes, I'm very spontaneous. <laughs> At the last minute, I may just do who knows what sometimes. You know. And, I, and I'd like change. I don't like things to be the same all the time. Mm -hmm. Right. That's not me. Mm -hmm. I, I don't like that. So consequently, my services were, well, I changed them up fairly regular. And I kept enough structure that people felt comfortable when they came in and didn't go, ooh, what happened? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? But we changed things up. And Pastor Logan, come, he'd come in and he'd preach one time for me and, three, you know, next year come back and th the service would look different. He'd go, Boy, y'all do something different all the time. He goes, me, I just thought you found the way God did it, and you did it that way till Jesus came. Oh, my. You know? But that was his personality, to be ordered and structured. He was from the old school. Mm -hmm. You know? And so we just did it, you know, and, and it worked for him. I mean, he was well known throughout the state, completely respected, powerful, I can't tell you how many young men of God are in the ministry today because of him. You know? So, they ultimately have to do what you're called to do, right? And the prophetic ministry will look like that. Mm -hmm. It will, it's, because who's it coming through? It's coming through you, right? Well, yeah. <clears throat> hmm. You know? If you don't talk old King James English, then when you prophesy, don't Prophesy in old King James English. <laughs> Thus saith the Lord, thou right. art, all, you know. Yeah. 
Thou art hitherfore to now called to. <laughs> Don't do that. Right? Just be you. Yes. <laughs> now, I just want to go through some of the types of diversity there can be. All right? Some may be completely or almost completely evangelistic in operation through words of knowledge and prophetic revelation designed to harvest souls outside the walls of the church. So their prophetic gifts may not work at all in here. Does that make sense? If there's no unsaved people in here, they may come in here and sit day after day and you not even know they're prophetic. Mm -hmm. But let them walk outside the walls and they can't even go in a restaurant without having prophetic revelation. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes. I got a friend that just walks in the bars. He says, come on, dear, you want to go to bars tonight? I'm like, huh? <laughs> no, I don't think so. He's like, well, we ain't going to drink. We're going to keep him from drinking. Mm -hmm. And he walks in there and wins them to the Lord. Wow. And he's got a church almost completely of old bar people. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Others may be almost maybe completely or almost completely pastoral in receiving words of wisdom mm -hmm. and prophetic revelation designed to help believers through tough places in their walk with the Lord. Does that make sense? Yeah. So they function completely in the church and go outside of the church and they have no prophetic revelation. Mm -hmm. But in the church they, they and they don't function in words of knowledge so much as words of wisdom. And, the, and then out of the words of wisdom, the prophetic revelation comes. Remember how we talked about these gifts spawn the prophetic? So they get words of wisdom that reads to prophetic revelation. Others can function primarily in personal prophecy. Right? Mm -hmm. Speaking to individuals. Functioning in words of knowledge related to difficult situations with unfamiliar people to assist believers in these sensitive matters. And I gave you an example of this when I, the Lord spoke to me about the guy having the affair. Difficult situation, sticky place. The pastor didn't want to deal with it, didn't need to, you know, wasn't, the Lord didn't want the pastor to have to deal with it, so he sent me to deal with it. <laughs> right? Not that the pastor wouldn't deal with it, right. but it would have embarrassed the guy. Who knows? He might have left church and not come back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's true. So he, he let me walk in there, give the assignment to me. Yeah. And I had a word of knowledge related to a difficult situation of an unfamiliar person, and I was able to assist him. Call him to repentance, right? Mm -hmm. And he received it. <clears throat> Others can start in words of knowledge that lead to personal prophecy that brings timely revelation of education, expectation, comfort to the body of Christ. So, um, you know, so this would be just guys having words of knowledge. Maybe uh, I was talking to Lisa on the way over here. You know, words of knowledge can be related to healing. Mm -hmm. So they call sickness out by name. Mm -hmm. You know, go and say, thus saith the Lord, you, I see you have, and call out the diseases they have. Okay? So, and they bring, you know, bring healing or edification, expectation, and comfort to the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. All right? Others can function almost completely on corporate level, speaking the whole congregation regarding, regarding strategic revelation. So they don't function in personal prophecy, they function in corporate prophecy. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Some are protective in nature, operating in discerning the spirits to reveal strate strategies which have been purposed against the people to bring them into captivity or oppressively deter their destiny in Christ. So these are spiritual warfare prophets that have discerning of spirits and can see strategic attacks. Okay? If you want a scripture for, for this one, I, can, I, was, don't get, I can't think of a uh, 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 current example. But in 2 Kings, Eli, the king of Syria said, I'm going to camp against the children of Israel in such and such a place to bring them captive. Mm -hmm. And Elijah, Elisha came down and said, don't go that way, king. Mm -hmm. 
And he did it, the Bible says he did it not once or twice, so he did it over and over again. Finally, the king of Syria comes in, calls all his advisors together and says, which one of y'all is the traitor? Mm -hmm. yeah. Telling the king of Israel where I'm, my, my instructions. He goes, nobody. The, the Lord, the Holy Spirit is, call, is telling uh, the king of Israel, what's, or telling Elisha what's going on in your bedchamber. <laughs> right? So, so here, Elisha was functioning in this, this category here as a protector of Israel, right? Others can function completely in the spirit of prophecy, being corporate advocates and expectation of comfort, which you hear almost every Sunday here, mm -hmm. off pretty much yeah. with, with a prophetic exhortation, right? That's corporate. It's corporate, and it's usually edification, exhortation, and comfort. Does that make sense? Yes. All right. So how I many you see there can be a wide diversity? Yeah. Yeah. You know, depending on your assignment, what you're called to do, and 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 how God wants you to help the the body of Christ. So don't get don't get <clears throat> discouraged if your assignment looks different from another person's assignment. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Just be faithful in your assignment. You know? And the Bible says if you're faithful over what God gives you, guess what he'll make you? Rule over more. Right? And so just stay faithful to what God has called you to do. You know? And I've known prophets that did personal prophecy. Everywhere they went, they had powerful prophetic words for individuals. But they started running with prophets who had corporate, corporate giftings, and then they wanted to start corporately prophesying. So then they start corporately prophesying, and it brings confusion to the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, mm -hmm. and it's like you're not gifted to, you're not gifted to bring that revelation. Right. So you have to, you have to stay in your. In, yeah, that's it. That's a good way to go. <laughs> yeah. Stay in your lane. Yeah. Stay in your lane and, and be good at what you do. And if God gives you another lane, then you move into it. But don't force it, right? Mm -hmm. Just stay where God calls you. you know? So, does that help? Mm -hmm. You know, I wanted us to just think outside the box a little bit. Out of, not, not outside of like some, but this imaginary box sometimes that we put ourselves in. Mm -hmm. Thinking ministry ha has to be a certain way mm -hmm. because that's all we've ever seen. Mm -hmm. Right? Right? Well, just because you've never seen it doesn't mean it isn't so. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. You know? And I know people say, well, we've never done it that way before. Well, just think if... Um, you know, just think if um, um, I can't think of his name now. Wilbur Wright would have said, "We've never, we've never done this before. Mm -hmm. You can't fly because we've never, we nobody's ever flown before." So, yeah. you know. And I heard, I, you know, I, my my grandmother used to have a friend that said used to say this all the time. You know. Um, well, if God made, made people to fly, he would have gave them wings. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And I used to, and we'd walk off and I'd say, Mammy, I'd say, Mammy, there's people flying every day. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So, just because, you, just because you're not comfortable or you had not seen it, doesn't mean it's not so. Right? Right? So let the Holy Spirit use you how he wants to use you. Now, it doesn't mean be a rebel. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. That's not license to say, oh, I'm just going to do it this way because I'm hell or high water and everybody can forget it. Right? Mm -hmm. Right. We're not, it's not called to be a rebel, but we also are not confined by people's expectations of us. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. We simply are responsible to walk with integrity before the Lord doing exactly what God calls us to do how he calls us to do it, when he calls us to do it. Right? right? 
You know? And if they receive it, they receive it. If they don't, they don't. Mm -hmm. But you've been true to you and the Lord. Yes. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. In fact, I, I wish I'd have brought the, one, of the, one of the first messages the pastor preached. I think it's the same Chronicles. It says, they'll know there's a prophet among them whether they receive it or whether they don't. Mm -hmm. We're not responsible for them receiving it. We're just responsible to accurately deliver it. Now the, now, the key point of that is to accurately deliver it. Right? Yes. right? We don't, we're not offensive just because we can be offensive. <laughs> That's right. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. You know? Well, we don't, just because they're not going to receive it, that doesn't give you license to go in there and be offensive. Right. You know? Does that make, does that make sense? Yes. Because what's, what's the overriding function of everything we do? Love. 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 Right? There you go, Marlon. Good job. Is that who gave, gave the answer? Yeah. That's good. All right. Anything related to that? You want to talk about? Okay. Well, Y'all don't have to help me here because we're going to do a review. All right. Who's that? Um, we'll go to lesson one. Mm -hmm. All right, so remember we talked in lesson one about the spirit of prophecy, right? Mm -hmm. And we said the spirit of prophecy is what? Can you pull that up? Okay, so, well, first of all, we talked about the Holy Spirit's the prophetic spirit, right? And he's the giver of prophecy. And that, everybody knows the Holy Spirit's prophetic, right? Because he, he shows you things to come. Right? He gives you stuff that you couldn't know about other people. Mm -hmm. Right? And he desires to raise up a prophetic people. And so we talked about, and everybody circle this in your notes if you got it, the closer you walk with the Holy Spirit, the more impactful your prophetic ministry will be. Any. The more you lose. Huh? The more you lose. <laughs> any of your ministry. That's true. Any ministry. Any ministry. Yeah. Any ministry. Any ministry, because he's the, the Holy Spirit is the giver of the gifts. Yes. And the giftings, right? Well, Jesus calls us to the giftings, but to the Holy Spirit that empowers the giftings, right? So, so you you have to walk in the Holy Spirit. And remember, we talked about, and some people think this is very controversial, you know. Some people think that, but the Bible says the gifts and the callings of God are without repentance. Yeah. And, and the Lord was using Israel. I mean, Paul was using Israel as an example, right? He said, they backslid for your benefit. Right. But God hasn't forgot them, mm -hmm. right? And if you were grafted in with their backsliding, if that was glorious, how much more glorious will their reintroduction into the body be? Mm -hmm. Right? And so he, he said, because the gifts and callings are God are without repentance. Mm -hmm. And so... You you can you can be called into a prophetic ministry and the Holy Spirit leave and still prophesy. Say that again. You can be called into a prophetic ministry and God give you the gift of prophecy, and then backslide and okay. still prophesy. I got you. I got you. But there'll be no life in it. Right. It's just coming through a gift. Right. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Jesus said, "The words I speak to you, their spirit and their life." Does that make sense? Yeah. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. So I can prophesy. I can prophesy, but if I prophesy without the Holy Spirit, guess what? It's going to be death. Uh -huh. It's going to be bondage. It's going to be unpowerful. It's going to be uninspirational. Confusing. Yeah. Confusing. It's going to, you know, mm -hmm. all the other things that come with flesh right. speaking. Right? Does that make sense? Yes. So we want to speak out of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Right? Remember I told you, prophesy the gold and let the silver and dross go by. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. You never miss it. And so we talked about the simplest definition of prophecy is receiving from God. Right? And speaking on His behalf. Right. Right? Then this was our working definition. Okay, misunderstanding number one: we're not to seek the gifts, only the not to seek the we're to only we're not to seek the gifts, only the giver of the gifts. Yes. 
Well, that's not true. The Bible says, earnestly desire to prophesy. Mm -hmm. Earnestly desire spiritual gifts, especially that you may prophesy. Right. Earnestly desire the Holy Spirit who gives you the gifts. No. Earnestly desire the best gifts. Earnestly desire the best gifts. What's the best gift? I think the one you need at the moment. <laughs> If I need a hammer, well, a saw is probably not the best tool. Mm. And if I need a saw, a hammer is probably not the best tool. Right? Yeah. Yet I show you a more excellent way, and the excellent way is what? L-O-V-E, love. <laughs> right? Right. Pursue love and desire. But especially, wow, okay, so how many know it's okay to seek the gifts? Now, it is not okay to seek the gifts without the giver. Right, right. I didn't say that. Mm -hmm. But what I said was it's okay to seek the, the Holy Spirit and his gifts. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. They've been like Simon the Magician. Huh? They've been like Simon the Magician. Yeah. Exactly. Right. right. We want the power, mm -hmm. you know, for distorted purpose too. Mm -hmm. Right. Number two, we don't need the gifts. What we really need is the fruit. Mm -hmm. Love, joy, peace, kindness, patience, goodness. I mean, you know, we need all that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But we also need the gifts. Right. Does that make sense? I mean, you've heard this statement. Don't. Ah, oh, you don't. What we really need is the, the. What we really need is the fruit of the spirit. Well, what you really need is everything the Holy Spirit gives. <laughs> it's what you really need. Yes. Right? Yes. Number three, have you ever heard this? Speaking of spiritual gifts is selfish. It opens up to de demonic deception. Hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. You may not have heard that, you know. <laughs> you got to come from some real non-Pentecostal okay. background to, to hear that kind of stuff. <laughs> So, so how many you know the Lord says He's a good God. He gives good gifts, and nobody asking for a fit for a fish is going to get a stone, right. or a serpent, and nobody asking for bread is going to get a stone. Right. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So you don't have to fear that if you seek the, the Holy Spirit, His gifts, that you're going to end up in demonic deception. Mm -hmm. Amen. Right. Because right. the Lord's a good God, and He's going to watch over you. Yes. Amen. Amen. And this one, prophecy is only for a few specially called people. Yeah. No. Well, I think this puts it all in, pro in right here. It says, if the whole church come together in one place and all prophesy. How many prophesy? All. All, all prophesy. And an unbeliever or unenforced opponent comes in, he'll be convinced by all, he's convicted by all, and thus the secrets of his heart are revealed, so falling down his face, he'll worship God and report that God is truly among you. Wouldn't it be amazing if a guest came in and Chet had a word and said, wow, uh, um, your mother's name is Irene. Irene, and she's from such and such. And then uh, Marlon comes up and says, man, the Lord shows me you got a daughter, her name is such and such, and she's at such and such, and she's this age. And then Trey comes in, and we just one by one go down. And before you know it, there's 60 people in the sanctuary, and they've received 60 prophetic revelations about their life and what God wants to do concerning those situations. They might fall down on their face and say, God's truly among you. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. But if everybody comes in and they're all speaking with tongues, they're probably going to run out faster than they went in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're going to go, these people are nuts. So, yeah. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. that, yeah, will they not say you're out of your mind? Huh? <laughs> will they not say that you're out of your mind? Yeah, that's exactly what they'll say. Isn't that right? For sure, they'll say, you are out of your mind. You're loco. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Yeah. 
Because it makes no sense. Yeah. All right. So. All right. Any questions on that? Okay. Here we're talking about understanding your calling. And we talked about there's three components to a myth of gifting. Right, or to a ministry, there's three components to a, to a ministry. In order to have a ministry, you have to have these three components. Without these three components, they're not a ministry. Does that make sense? You have to have a calling. Mm -hmm. Number uno, right? Your calling gives you your identity. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. You have to have a gift. Mm -hmm. Right? Your gift gives you the enablement to serve others. To serve others. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. If you have hospitality, let them serve faithfully. If you have giving, let them give cheerfully, the Bible says. Mm -hmm. Romans 12. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you have a gift. That's how you serve Christ. You serve others or serve Christ through others, right? By serving others. And just because somebody's not doing everything like you do it the way you do it, don't mean they don't have a gift, they don't have a calling. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And just because it's not your cup of tea right. doesn't mean That's right. it's not from God. That's right. And then thirdly, I didn't put this in there, but you have to have an anointing. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because He has anointed me. Anointed me. Right? Mm -hmm. Three parts to a ministry. Calling, gifting, and anointing. Mm -hmm. Those are the three parts. You have to have those three to have a ministry. Or let's say you have to have those three to have an effective ministry. Yeah. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yes. All right. Calling, <clears throat> calling gifting, what you say? Calling, gifting, and anointing. Anointing. You know, I, I used pastor in Leesville, and there was an old black guy that had a gas station. Old godly black guy, you know, probably 70 years old. I stopped gas, and he'd say, hey, preacher, you know, some people will sit and some just went. He goes, which are you? <laughs> you know? Uh -huh. So you gotta have a calling, right? Some people what? Some, some he said some people are sent and some just went. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> and so the question is, are you called, right? Right. <clears throat> and then you have to have a gift. You have a gift. That's your your divine enablement. Mm -hmm. So what is your gifting? Word of wisdom, word of knowledge, prophecy, tongues, interpretation of tongues, hospitality. So how does a how does somebody determine what their gifting is? Is it because it's not always necessarily something that you're comfortable with? How do you? Um, how do you? No, but it's something that you're. Divinely enabled. enabled. Right. Divinely enabled. Mm -hmm. So I say it this way. It can, you can be totally uncomfortable with it, but it comes easy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, that's, right. yeah. That makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. And possibly more than one gift. Yes, you can have more than one gift. Mm -hmm. Say that again, Trey. I was like, that makes perfectly, like, that makes, like, perfect sense to me. Because, like, me, I don't like talking to people at all. But it comes so easy to me. When you get up there to speak, it, it just comes out, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. You know, I like the flunk speech. I like the flunk <laughs> speech in college. My mama said, she, I'm going I'm to I'm kill you and tell God you died. If you don't get that speech. <laughs> yeah. You know, and I was like, kill me. I ain't going to get the speech. <laughs> Isn't it amazing how many people, before they got in the ministry or started, they were unable to really speak? And can I tell you something, Dave? I, I will talk to you for hours, one on one. Individually, I'll talk to you for hours. I hate, I hate standing up in front of groups. <laughs> I love your art. I hate it. I don't, I, to this day, I don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> Sir? <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I have the same debate with myself. I'm going, okay, deal, get up and do it. You can do this. Mm -hmm. I don't let you know it, but I do it. I'm glad you told me. That's really I really am. I really am. You know? And I, I and my big and you're not 
Are you really capable of doing this? I'm like, the Lord will give you what you need to do. Yeah, give you what you need. But you, that, that's not easy always for me. No, it's not. You just have to depend on the Lord, you know? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's the secret. That's the key right there. Depend you, know? on you just go, okay, Lord, you got, you, it's up to you. God help me. Yeah. You give me something, they're going to get it. If they don't, we're going home and get nothing. And that's another thing, too. All you can, praise God. If I put a chocolate cake here and I ask you to come get you a piece, and when we left that chocolate cake was there, whose fault would it be you didn't get nothing? That's right. Woo! Hmm. Yeah, me to remember that. That's so weird. You know? And so your gifting is just what you, what you, what you do. You know? Now, see, you think this comes natural. You think this comes... You know, you just see me get up here and I just go. But you don't see me going <laughs> before I get here. You know? So there's some, there's now, some, I, I, now, now, Lisa, I, we've been riding together to church lately, so she gets to see it. Some, <laughs> she gets to see me being helter skelter before I get here. <laughs> but I'm, let me ask you this and see if you don't agree. You might not. Sometimes <laughs> that's good for us to be that way. Right. Because you realize, God, I've got to have you to be able to do this. Right. Mm -hmm. Like the old, there was a young guy was called, you know, going to preach at this conference, and he couldn't wait till it's time to preach, and he ran up to there, you know, and he preached, and it fell flat on his face, mm -hmm. and so he walked away from the pulpit with his head down real slow, mm -hmm. and an old guy came up to him and said, "Son, if you'd have went into the pulpit like you left the pulpit, you'd have came out of the pulpit mm -hmm. like you went into it." Oh wow! Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Hard work. Right. If you'd been humble going into it, you'd have ran out of it. Mm -hmm. But because you ran into it, you mm -hmm. came out of it humbled. Yeah. Right? So, depending on, you know, your call. So, how do you know your gifting? And, and because, and let me tell you how I ended up at my gifting. is It's something that you can even push away at times. And it just keeps coming back in your heart. You just say, well, I'm not doing that anymore. I'm tired of it. I'm through. Mm -hmm. And then... That's why preachers, when they're not preaching, they're so hard to live with. They're miserable. <laughs> yeah. Lord, forgive me. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> yeah, because it's like fire set up in their bones. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When my husband... Mm -hmm. uh, Go ahead. When my husband was out of church, he was where sometimes they were. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You there was hard that times, huh? Didn't you ever have that problem? Oh, no. You don't? <laughs> 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 so... You know? Uh, yeah. So, you, you know, it just keeps man. coming back. Don't, don't think he was a good man. Don't yeah, oh, oh, yeah no, nobody's no, thinking no. that. No. You know, like like healing. I get so frustrated with healing sometimes, you know? Mm -hmm. And I, I just push away. I said, I'm through with it. I'm through with it, Lord. That lasts about a week, two weeks, a month. Mm -hmm. And it just keeps great. Then it's, next thing I know, it's like, Creeping back up in my spirit, just you know, I just can't let it go, you know. Mm -hmm. And here I am, been in ministry almost thirty years, and you know, and that's still a fire burning in me. Mm -hmm. I'm very passionate about it. Yeah, <laughs> and don't you feel sorry for preachers that backslide and get completely out of church? Don't you know they're never happy? No, they're not happy. They're not happy. Mm -hmm. Even a same God that does this, right? Right. Yeah. So we talked about that there are. So here we talked about the, the gifts and callings of God are without. They're irrevocable. Mm -hmm. Concerning the gospel, they're enemies for your sake, but concerning the election, they are beloved for the sake of the fathers, for the gifts and calling of God are without revoke, are irrevocable. Mm -hmm. Right? So they can walk away with it. Just because they walk away from it doesn't mean that God, God, God doesn't go, oh, okay, you walk away from it, no problem. <laughs> he loves us. Not He's like, I'm God. And people think that's, you know, God's not schizophrenic, you know. He, when he calls you to something, he really means it. Yeah. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. He's not going to go, oh, man, you know. Can't believe, Jesus, what were we thinking? <laughs> right. 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 Hmm. <laughs> oh my God! You know that Trey—he'd have been a much better evangelist. I, well, 
Jesus! <laughs> Didn't you realize he'd have been a better evangelist than he was this? No, he knew exactly what he's calling you to. Right? Praise the Lord, God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and not only that, but he also knew your failures and called you anyway. Right. And he knew your stupidity and called you anyway. <laughs> right? Yes. And he knew all the dumb stuff you were going to do and called you anyway. And so we talked about that this, um, um, that gifts are divine enablements, right? Given to you to serve. Gifts are divine enablements given you to serve. Right? They're for the benefit of others. Mm -hmm. Okay? Amen. And an office is not something you do, it's something you are. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I am a prophet, I prophesy. Does that make sense? Or I am a pastor, I shepherd. Or I teach. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then a pastor can be up. Yeah. And then, you know. So you, you are a pastor, and then you have gifts that support the pastoral, what you are. Those things that support what you are is what you do. Mm -hmm. Your gifts. Does that right. make sense? Yeah. If you're a teacher, that's what you are. Mm -hmm. What you do is... Oh, yeah. that make sense? Mm -hmm. You have certain giftings that go along. Probably a hospitality if you're going to be a teacher. You know, yeah, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Most teachers come in, they like to make their rooms all pretty and host people and comfortable, and they think about that stuff. <laughs> does that make sense? Yeah. They think about how you sit, what's the temperature. Yeah. Me, I come in, I don't think about any of that stuff. None of it. Mm -hmm. Not ever on my mind. <laughs> That's yeah. not on my mind. Mm -hmm. I walk in going, Lord, what are you saying? What's the atmosphere? Mm -hmm. I don't care what you sit in. I don't care if you sit on the floor. <laughs> right? Because mm -hmm. I'm looking for the atmosphere. I'm looking for what God's saying. Looking for what he's doing. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. But teachers are coming in going, let's get everybody comfortable mm -hmm. so they can learn. Mm -hmm. Let's get the right temperature. You know, and everybody's got a Coke and a mint and, <laughs> and happy. You know, and I'm not, I'm not mocking that. I'm just saying that's their... That's their gifting. Mm -hmm. And it brings that mentality. Right. Make you comfortable. Let you learn. So that when you come in and hear from the Lord, they can receive. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. You know? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, and pastors up there going, because pastors mm -hmm. are affirmational, right? Right. Pastors bring affirmation. So they're up there going, who's missing? Wonder what's wrong with them. <laughs> yeah. Who? Oh, the sisters also don't look so good today. Wonder what she's struggling with. Uh -huh. I've got a message. I've got to teach them today. Yeah. And that makes sense. Right. Because that's their mindset, and they got gifts that bring that to mindset. Be in tune with their sheep. Yeah. And understand this. This is where people struggle. Most all of us struggle with this with other giftings. Because giftings, everybody, you got to write this down. This will be wisdom that you'll cherish forever. Giftings bring a mindset. Okay? Okay. Uh, uh, your calling brings a mindset. When I say gifting, not a gift, your gifting, your calling. Your gifting brings a mindset. So pastors think one way, mm -hmm. prophets think another way. Sometimes pastors and prophets, because they don't think the same. Right. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Mm. Yeah. We need both thinking. Right. We need both sets of thinking. Yes. And they got to learn to work harmony together. <laughs> In unity. That's right. Right. Mm -hmm. So. Give things, bring different mindsets. If you're a pastor, you don't think a certain way. If you're a teacher, you don't think a certain way. If you're an evangelist, yeah. you know the evangelist, he can't figure out, why are y'all meeting every Sunday? Why are we out there winning souls? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Have you done the art of the gospel? 
<laughs> Dude, I did a thousand times. They hadn't heard it once. Yeah. What are you doing out there? Yeah. Right? Right? Uh-huh. That's their mentality. Yeah. Come on, let's go to the streets. Let's go out there. What, you don't go to the streets? Crazy you? That's where you're supposed to be. Mm-hmm. That's their mentality. What's the pastor? Streets, nothing. Let's get them in here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's yeah, disciple them. Let's, yeah. They got to get discipled. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. The evangelist is like, forget the disciples. Let's just get them to heaven. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Huh. See? Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. So they think a certain way. Mm. When you have a mind, when you have a gift and you have a it comes with a mindset. And according to the way um, I don't want to say this thing stupid. According to the way you were raised, according to what you did when you young, a lot of times will show up in your ministry. Absolutely. You know, and a lot of times it's our background, you know. Not that that rules us, but you didn't. I, and I think about me, I was raised on a farm. Mm-hmm. And so a lot of times I give examples. It's, yeah. mm-hmm. They're old farm examples. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Trey, who was not raised on a farm, probably doesn't have one single farm example. Yeah. You know? But that's important with each person to remember that. Yeah. But you know what? There's a lot of people that work on farms that need to be one. Hmm. And then there's a lot of inner city street kids that need to be one. Right. Yeah. And the old farm boy may not reach any of those inner city kids, street kids. That's right. Man. Does that make sense? And so here's the thing that you'll understand. You get true to you and God will call your tribe to you. Oh, that's good. Say that again. Yeah. You be true to who you are, and God will call your tribe to you. Hmm. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Yes. You'll win who you're supposed to win. You'll influence who you're supposed to influence. You'll reach who you're... Just be good at you. Be the best you, be the best at you you can be, mm-hmm. and God will put the people around you that he wants you to minister to. And, amen? Amen. Or he'll lead you to the place right. where your tribe is. So we talked about there's three levels of prophetic gifting. Where's the spirit of prophecy? Mm-hmm. Right? So the spirit of prophecy is not a gifting, but it's a corporate anointing. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, and we gave you the examples of Saul. Remember, every time he got around Samuel in the prophecy, he started prophesying. Mm-hmm. Back one time he got around him, he laid down naked and prophesied all day, at night, you know. So, um, so the spirit of prophecy doesn't run on its own. You know, mm-hmm. and I gave you the example of a modern day example of the church service gets going, and usually somewhere two thirds of the way, or just before the pastor preaches, when the worship's at a high point, and the most people are in the spirit mm-hmm. as deep as they're going to get. Usually, you get this prophetic utterance of exhortation, edification, and comfort. You know, you rarely say, "Stand with me, let's worship." Thus saith the Lord. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. It's always after the, the Spirit has risen. Decent and in order. You know? Yeah. And so, and it, but it, it waits to a high point because it's running off of the, the corporate anointing. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. And then you have, and so we talked about how everybody can function in this, right? When there's a mighty presence of the Holy Spirit manifested in the service, you know, there's a lot of people could give that prophetic utterance. Mm-hmm. Usually one person does, and the Bible says that there be two or three at the most. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Okay. Uh, when they get in the presence of a strong prophetic anointing, then people have prophetic words. I used to preach uh, at my church, and when, when the prophetic anointing come on me really strong and I start prophesying, a guy would go by, he'd go, well, he'd go, well, he'd, there's a guy in the church start prophesying, you know? And I'd have to say, don't do that. Because mm-hmm. he'd go, the same people I just prophesied over and want to prophesy over them. 
You know, and I was going, that's not your anointing, dude. You're, prof you're piggybacking on mine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? And so, and not only that, but he was taking their, their emphasis off of, he was taking the emphasis off what I said and putting it on what he said. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nah, nah. You know? But, and, but he was genuine about it. He wasn't trying to be disruptive, but he never recognized that that wasn't his anointing. That was running on the spirit of prophecy. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And then everybody can function in, in the priesthood of the believer for their own life. And remember I talked about you can take the word and you can do two things with it. You can declare it as a promise or you can hear it from the Lord in a rhema word and speak it out as a prophetic declaration. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Chet, you want me to say something? No. Sorry. Okay. Does that make sense? Number two, there's a gift of prophecy. And this functions, everybody say regularly. Regularly. And independently. Regularly. Regularly or fairly regularly. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So it's going to, regularly does not mean every day necessarily, but fairly regularly in your life. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, so do you have it outside of service? Mm -hmm. Or do you have it independent of the state of the service? Does that make sense? Sometimes the service can be going real dull and I'm getting real low and I'm getting revelation. It drives me nuts. Mm -hmm. Because I'm going, okay, there's a hindrance here, there's something here, there's a here, I'm, and I'm getting it, I feel it, I sense it, you know. And so I have to start battling in the spirit to free that up so the service can get to the place it needs to get, mm -hmm. you know, because that's one of the things I do mm -hmm. is function in atmosphere, very sensitive to atmosphere. Okay, so what you're just speaking about right now. Um, Do you verbalize that, or is it just something you start praying about? I mean, for instance, if I'm in the back corner, which I usually am, and there's times when, I don't know if it's exactly what you're speaking of, but it seems like all of a sudden the, 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 the spirit has just kind of waned. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, something's wrong here, because pastor's preaching, the, he's preaching fire, mm -hmm. but it's like something's quenching the fire. Mm -hmm. And I start praying about that. Mm -hmm. Is that what you're speaking of? Mm -hmm. Okay, I just want to make sure I was on yeah. the same page. Right. Pastor was up one day. We were worshiping, and the service was, there was a, a real struggle. I felt the heaviness. And I, I leaned over to Lisa, and I said, this, I'm, I can't get into worship. It's heavy in here. Mm -hmm. you know. And then Pastor gets up five minutes later and starts talking about, there's spirit of heaviness. People, some of those people coming in heavy. Right. You know, and starts mm -hmm. prophesying to people who were heavy. I think maybe you were one of them that day. And that, and that's that is why it's so important that we be sensitive to the spirit when we're in church. We come. Yes. We need to come and be ready. To be, and be then Pastor to got on talking to about people, young people who were not. I forgot what he was saying. Anyway, he started prophesying over young a, a young person. Do you remember that? Y'all remember that day? I remember that huh? day. I remember that day. You remember what he said? He said, he, stopped, he started prophesying something over that day. And guess what? I was standing there, and I will tell you this, because this is the first time I've talked about this. I was standing there, and I went, holy smokes. <laughs> <laughs> because I thought a bird had flown through the service. But I saw a demon spirit. When Pastor started prophesying over the individuals, the teens, a spirit left. Mm -hmm. I saw it flew across the, it, it flew mm -hmm. across the sanctuary and went out by the exit sign mm -hmm. up through the ceiling. Mm -hmm. And I said, holy smokes. And Lisa goes, what did you say holy smokes for? I said, because I just saw a spirit. Leak. She said, oh, well, I just saw a whole, the, the whole service was filled with smoke and a hole got in it. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, you were seeing the same thing. <laughs> you know, so, and so neither one of us vocalized that message to the church. We just prayed about it. Yeah. Right. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So I started praying about the spirit of heaviness. I started binding up spirits that were operating. And, event, and then as I was binding up those spirits, Pastor Ray was prophesying. And guess what? All of us working together, that spirit left. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes. Oh, yeah. And he was showing Lisa and I the same thing in different 
in different ways. In different manifestations. She saw it as a cloud that had a hole poked in it, mm -hmm. and I saw it as a spirit leaving. <laughs> Praise God. That makes sense? And we, we didn't say anything to anybody. We just sat over there and were praying about it. Right. <laughs> you know? Because sometimes you're not meant to, to speak it. I think that's a really good point because I think we can get confused about that when we receive something. You know, I, I think that's what you're referring to. Do you verbalize that? Mm -hmm. yeah. You know? And so knowing the difference when, when it's time to verbalize and when it's not, I mean. <laughs> mm -hmm. I guess it's a thing of, Pastor's already pastoring. Mm -hmm. he's, he's, he's giving his message. He's giving his word. Um, the responsibility then comes to us to intercede. Okay. To make sure that the rest of the congregation... Now I know why. Everybody turn to 2 Kings chapter 6. Chapter 2. I'm sorry. 1 Kings chapter 2 or 2 Kings chapter 2. Let me figure it out. Second Kings. Second Kings chapter two. I told Lisa on the way over here I had this on my heart and did not know why I was I had it, but I had it. And so now I know. Second Kings chapter two. So Elisha's descending to heaven, right? And so he goes, let's look at verse three. So it says, now he came, so he says, they went down to Bethel. Now the sons of the prophets who were at Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, do you know that the Lord will take away your master from over you today? And he said, yes, I know, keep silent. <laughs> now why did God give them something that he already knew and didn't want to hear? Because they were supposed to pray. Yeah. Yeah. about it. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then it says he went to, get to uh, Jericho. Jericho, verse 5. The sons of the prophet Jericho said, do you not know that your mouth will take your master away from over you today? And he said, yes, I know. Keep silent. <laughs> mm -hmm. He already knew it. He didn't need the prophetic word. Why did he need the prayer? Well, what did Elijah say? Before we cross over, what do you want from me? I want to double portion your spirit. Dude, you've asked a hard thing. <laughs> uh -huh. You've asked something hard. Maybe he needed some intercession from those sons of the prophets uh -huh. to help him receive the hard thing. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's important that we remember to be, be sent to the spirit. Yes. yes. And so he's giving you revelation because Pastor Ray's preaching something. It's a hard thing. Uh -huh. Yeah. People are resisting it. Okay. Mm -hmm, that's good. Pray about it. Push it through. Start warring with him. Use your prophetic gift to help the people. Mm -hmm. Receive right. what pastor is given. Because mm -hmm. it's a hard thing. It's being resisted in the spirit or the flesh. That's good. Don't say it. He already knows. Pastor Ray, I spirit filled or spirit filled a spirit of resistance. I know. Shut up. <laughs> Right, exactly. I can see that. Right? That's exactly the response you're going to get. It's so practical. It makes so much sense. I'm like, yeah. Of course. Right? Mm -hmm. Shut up. Pray about it. If you got the revelation, why aren't you praying? Mm -hmm. Why are you telling me? I already know that. Right. See? Mm -hmm. So he gives it to you so you can push it through. But you know what they did? They were almost kind of mockingly at it. Don't you know your master's going to be taken from you today? Yeah, I know that. Instead of praying. Yeah, but you know what they did when he got to, when the, then he gone down and says, and when they saw the spirit of Elijah, they came to him and said, ooh, this is a good land, but the water's bad. Can you fix the water for us? <laughs> I just said, shut up. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> That's why I wasn't in the Bible. <laughs> Oh my gosh. You know, at least I've been over here. Calm down. No, no. Just bless them, help them. <laughs> right? Sometimes there's a time to slow down and I'm speaking. I just say I'm who I am. So you just give me one. That's a good thing. 
You know? So, so, so a lot of times God gives us prophetic revelation not to verbalize, mm -hmm. but to push through in the Spirit. Yes. To join in in prayer. Mm -hmm. You know? And so, you, you, so when you get that, what do you do? You have not because you ask not. Lord, what do I do with this? Mm -hmm. Are you giving it to, do I feel this to pray for Pastor Ray in the service? Or do I feel this to speak later about it? Mm -hmm. Or what do I do with it? Right. Mm -hmm. See? Start asking questions. Who's this for? Why am I feeling this? What's the purpose of this? Right. What do I do with it? Ask God those questions. Yeah. He's the one who knows, right? He's the one who's giving you those insights and revelations mm -hmm. and so you ask but this is a prime example of them getting revelation that he already knew and he didn't need them to tell him he needed them to pray with him because he was asking a hard thing yes right. see mm -hmm. if he'd have been asking something easy they probably wouldn't have gotten the revelation right right and you know what that's the way prophecy is most of the time when God gives you prophecy, it's because you need it. You need it because you're going through something that's you're, it's hard for you. And, and what's hard for you may not be hard for somebody else. And I think, am I am wrong to tell me, uh, we can receive a prophecy today, and we may not get the whole thing, but in time it will open up to us. Is that right? 1 Corinthians chapter 13, for we know in part, we prophesy in part. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Right? And remember how we talked about prophecy is, is uh, and, we, and there was one of the points we made later on in one of the messages, prophecy is uh, progressive. Yeah. yeah. You get part of it now, you get part of it later. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Oh, yes. So don't throw it aside. No. Keep it. Yes. And, and you know. You, you may not understand it, mm -hmm. but, you will. but you will in time. Right. And that's why I would say don't act on it. Just don't always act. Just, well, you get a word, don't go run out. David, so they called David and they said, you poured oil on him, you're anointed king of Israel. What did he do? Went back to the flocks, guys. Yeah. <laughs> right. And God will show me what I, so I'm not rejecting this, but I'm just going to follow it away and wait till, the, till God tells me it's time to do it. Right. If he'd have went into Jerusalem at that point and said, look, this all said, I'm king, Saul probably what? Cut his head off. Yeah. <laughs> right? Right. One time. Yes. Father, we love you and we thank you for your presence. We ask that you just uh, help us to walk powerfully in a prophetic anointing. God, that you help us do it accurately with, with um, precision and power. That you help us use our gifts for the benefit of the kingdom of God, for the blessing of the church and the help of others and we just give you all the praise and all the glory raise up among us a spirit of prophecy that you be exalted people be helped and the kingdom furthered in jesus name